still gave a live TV audience another thriller with Newcastle fighting a long uphill battle. Bidini's got the cross in and Johnson, Tommy Johnson, 1-0. Eating Forsyth to it, Lee Clark, Peacock. Referees brought play back. Keegan right off his bench there, absolutely furious. There, really is. Jaw out. He's a genuine nice guy, Kevin Keegan, but the old chin was out there. He's a competitor as well. I think Kevin was more concerned that the referee had brought the play back to give a free kick to Newcastle when they had Gavin Pe Peacock in a one-to-one -one situation up front. I would mu I'm sure Kevin would much rather let the referee let him go. Look on again there, but Scott couldn't quite make up the ground. And Allison, I suspect, is very keen to keep as fiercely competitive a game as this under tight control. Maybe a little knock on there. So the check can collect. Again, generating a tremendous amount of pace. It's up and down stuff. Down goes Darren Wassell. Wassell, another import from the city of Nottingham. 600,000. All big money buys in this Derby team. He really established himself at Forest. And uh, managing to do a rather more convincing job here at Derby. Brian winning it in midfield. Now Lee Clark. Short was always on his back. Maybe that was just enough to force Lee Clark's shot away from the target. Always under pressure there, wasn't he? He always was, but when you look at the Derby outfit here, they pushed him wide, and, and in order for the score with a shot like this, it would have been a tremendously good shot. I mean, the goalkeeper could make his angle on the ball, and, and he did as much as he could be. I would have thought he would have tried to play that ball across the face of the goals, actually. He hoped somebody was coming in on it. Not a good angle to shoot from. Another typical Lee Clark run down that inside right channel. And the castle are getting room down there, fully enough, against a very tightly packed Derby defence. But the Derby defence on, on, on filling in the holes in the corners, and the castle are, make, are making runs into there and getting away with it. It's Lee Clark again. Sheedy looking to set Peacock away, cut out though by Cavana. This is Paul Kitson. It was rather. Cavana. Came up through the FA School of Excellence. But this is Kitson. It's a dangerous tackle, the ball rolling free across the edge of the 18-yard box. Peacock did well. It's gone straight to Tommy Johnson. Scott. You can't start under a spot of pressure here, but they've come away with it. Scott was dumped down then. And then the referee pulling that one back as well. Kelly with the Lee. Thumping challenge from Forsyth there, but the referee said that was perfectly fair. And now Johnson goes round Venison. Gabbiadini trying to get away in the middle. Tommy Johnson charged down by Howie. Johnson again can turn and play the ball across. Gabbiadini is there. Kitson. And Scott clears. Kitson looking to line up the shot then. Kevin Scott wouldn't give him the room. Could be a break on here down the middle. Kelly trying to get away, but well played by Mr. Two and a half million pound Craig Short. It's interesting there when Forsyth won that very, very good tackle. How quickly Derby got people forward. When they actually went to play the ball into the box, they had five players in the box in the 18 yard box at Newcastle in within seconds, which is the, the, ex exactly the way Newcastle are going to get caught if they do get caught again. Now, Robert Lee. Cluster of shirts in front of them, but comes off Forsyth for a corner kick. Quickly taken short for Venison. Peacock couldn't just get around on it enough, but the quickly taken corner nearly catching Derby unawares. 
halfway through this first half. Let's get a comment back in the studio from David Mills. It's exciting stuff, certainly, at St James's. Newcastle pushing forward, playing well. They've just got to guard against being caught defensively, as Jack says. They've just got to make sure that they don't get sloppy defensively and allow Derby to push forward quickly and counter-attack, because a second goal, if Derby were to get one, would make it very, very difficult for Newcastle. Yes, indeed, David. Uh, need to keep close attention at the back. That David agreed with me. He used to play for me, he's frightened to death of me, you know. Even from the safety of the studio. Well, Venison now. Lee turning and getting the ball played in, but again, Darby just get to it first before it gets across the face of the goal. How are we playing it in there? Linesman called the offside then. To say Derby are bringing as many people back behind the ball and, and defending in front of their own goals, they're not closing down people on wide positions very quickly and, and well enough for me. And they're giving Newcastle the opportunity to cross balls into the 18-yard box. And I think eventually Newcastle might make that pay. Cool turning well, Pembridge, rubbed by O'Brien. It's quickly released to Lee Clark again, one of those runs down the right. Peacock is in the middle, he's got to wait for a bit of support. Clark still going on the outside to Lee, he'll have to knock the crossing quickly. Sutton struggling, and away and behind by Cavana. They were really caught then with Sutton scuffling across his goal. Like I say, plenty of room down in the corners to play balls for Lee Clark or Peacock to run for, and they made that work. A lovely football by Newcastle, beautiful football, played it very, very well, got in a very dangerous cross to the far post, and there was nobody stood there and not within the empty net. Sheedy now with a corner kick. Scott getting a touch, but not really able to create anything from it. Lee did well then. And he's still closing down Pembridge. And a far ball in midfield, Mark Pembridge for Derby. Certainly they've got their work cut out in the centre of the field. It's Newcastle's. O'Brien. Now he forward. Knock on there for Peacock to try to get something going. 25 minutes gone, still 1 0 to Derby. Lee Clark not able to get that shot in. It's Marco Gabbiadini back covering. Plenty of prospects of more goals surely to come in a game as lively and eventful as this. Newcastle. Pressure, pressure, pressure all the time. Kenny. O'Brien looking to go on the outside there. Venison supporting. It was a disappointing ball in. And now they have to watch again. Johnson is one of the pacey front runners for Derby who can break offside, but Gabbiadini in his starting blocks down the middle there again, looking to get on the end of something. Danger was there. The danger was certainly there because. Newcastle really just stopped, put their hands in the air and assumed that Gary Deedy would be going to give up, give up side. But in fact, Gary Venison had gone back chasing the player and there was only a half a yard in it for the linesman to see. Otherwise, it was Gary Deedy through on his own. Beresford. Now Lee. Sutton off his line. There could be something here. Peacock's in the middle, Kelly's in the middle. And Lee... He could see perhaps they were all expecting the ball across and tried to go for the different angle. The whole defence was almost leaning to cut out the cross, and Lee decided to have a go himself. Lee doing all the hard work then. When you put yourself in Lee's position now, you know, and you're on the corner of the six-yard box and everybody's running towards you and picking off, there's not a lot of things you can see there. And <laughs> He finally thought the best option was to go for a shot, and I agree with him. There's that chance again. Just have a look at this. You'd see his people start to close down and get the wards of him and get more and more people between him and the goals. His best option is the shot. Now, we're back with Peacock in a dangerous position, and Sheedy now. 
for Beresford, charged down again. It's Patterson that time, and everybody in there. Jason Cavana this time can be pulled up for the collision. Newcastle looking to make something of these dead ball kicks. Abiodini right back there again. Absolutely every Derby player back in the penalty area now, let alone their own half. And the majority of them are in that six yard box. Five and six will make the runs for Newcastle as the corner comes across. And it was too deep for the ball. Scott has to check back, does well to find O'Brien. Scott again, looking to create a bit of room, they've got the throw in. It's a wall of yellow shirts between Robert Lee and Steve Sutton. Peacock for Lee. Three men around him, hunting in posses, Derby. Then spare at the back post, though, on that occasion, Newcastle. Here's Tommy Johnson, only Cambridge and Brian in there, but Cambridge rode the tackle well, but there's no one forward now for Derby. Howie knocks it back for Cernicek. Cernicek's not seen too much of the ball, it must be said. It's an opening break, but now Kelly looking to get a run, but Craig Short. Short. Started his career with Scarborough sticking to it then. Craig Short, two and a half million pounds, starting at Pickering Town and then via Scarborough, Notts County, into the multi million pound bracket. That one slicing off Forsyth for Peacock, but Forsyth quick to recover. Peacock, the Newcastle skipper, getting the treatment. Wide for Lee. That one didn't reach. Kitson looking for Tommy Johnson to make a run around Gabbiadini. Rafter, Venison rather. Venison appealing, and Johnson's pace causing problems. Yes, he did pull it him. He pulled it him a little bit, and, he, and, he, and it was a foul. But it's the sort of break that Newcastle have got to be careful with. This game is so finely balanced now. The next team to score the goal will win the game. See, there's room here, there's nobody, the full centre-back's not going to get across and do anything here. But the next team to, win, to score, if it's... <laughs> the Castle have got to be the next team to score, otherwise they're going to be really pushed. Headed down there for Peacock. Cover had to be there. Russell racing to get on with it Newcastle before Derby regroup again Lee Lee against Forsyth fit in was enough but not effective, Howie. And Derby had the throw. Howie, square to Beresford. Derby coming here, of course, with those two spectacular wins behind them. 5-1 in the Cup at Luton and then 4-3 at Brentford in the Anglo-Italian semi-final. So they're certainly in goal scoring form, but it's defending they're doing now yet again as Newcastle come forward. After all that. There is hope for Newcastle here. I mean, you've, you've just seen a, a movement there where they, they, they had three opportunities to have a shot and he decided not to take it and finish it. Trying to play a little sport through the defence and went out for a goal kick. 
But Newcastle have created loads of opportunities around the 18-yard box like that because for all Derby's numbers, they're not the best tag lines or kickers up in the world. And Newcastle are managing to, to winkle out little opportunities. But it's very important that Newcastle are the next team to score. If they go 2 0 down, it will it will give Derby a lot more confidence to just come forward and get another goal. Got that last attack again, Jack. Yes, well you can see where all the people are. Very rare ball at Newcastle win in the air. But watch when he comes inside here. He's got three opportunities to have a whack. That's the first one. That's the second one. That's the third one. He decides to pass it. I mean, that's a great opportunity to strike a ball from on your right foot coming across. If it's, if it's not your best foot, it doesn't matter because if you don't know where it's going, the goalkeeper doesn't either. Oh, and he finished straight for Kevin. Yes, he's up there. Twice manager of the month in September and November. Completes one year in management with this game. February the 5th, he took over against Bristol City. And this one completes 12 months as a manager. And he won't want to end it and celebrate a birthday, as it were, on a losing note, especially against Arthur Cox. Of all people, much as he may respect him. Gavinini getting the treatment from the crowd, but getting away from Howie. Gavinini following up again. Got fired in there by Marty Cool. Certainly check getting behind it. Cool sign from Portsmouth. Well, they've not been in the Newcastle half much derby, but when they have been there, they've looked very, very dangerous and very strong and seem to know what they're about. And here's Gavidini again. Robin Scott and Howie living dangerously. Tommy Johnson getting it back. Gabbiadini looking to turn. Kitson got the shot in quickly. And as you were saying again, Jack, when they do get forward, they are dangerous. It's Newcastle now on a break. Kelly couldn't keep that one in play. Half-time team talk will be the Newcastle players. Just keep playing the way you are, keep plugging away, but make sure you don't you get people back behind the ball and make sure you pick people up when they're on the break. Because that will be Kevin's greatest fear. Just under 10 minutes till we get to that team talk, until the players do anyway. Just under 10 minutes to go in this extremely eventful first half. Newcastle's games this season, they just don't seem to have patches where the game dies at all. It's non-stop all the time. Everyone a cup tie is the cliche. Pembridge. Up and under there from Kevin Scott. Chase this one all the way. Kavanagh's header nearly falling short, but Kelly as willing as ever to chase. Cool. Johnson got ahead to it, but to no effect really. Joe's Knox County when Newcastle United were his first love. I mean the last laugh so far today. for getting forward. Peacock, the touch back there, just took it away from Kevin Cheney, who was shaping for a shot at goal. Johnson and Venison again. And Tommy Johnson is proving a fair old handful. Gary Venison's getting a little bit upset here. He's, this, this boy's pushed him very, very hard. And Gary had a real go at him there. He was lucky to, to, to get away with it, actually. Because there was intent there, he was going to get the gap, he wasn't that bothered about the ball. Gangling sort of front runner, Tommy Johnson. Awkward elbows, non stop sort of character. Lee Clark, non stop as well. Quickly taken by Scott. Clark felt that one, but uh, there's no time for respite in this game. Down goes Kelly, great short. 
does not agree with Mr Allison's interpretation of that incident, but it's another free kick in an interesting position. We've not really had a, a crack at goal yet from Sheedy or O'Brien. It's a good distance out, but not beyond their shooting range. I would have thought at that angle it's just beyond the shooting range. I should imagine Kevin with this one will go maybe round the wall. And Brian's there as well. And he's going to have a go. Well, well, Brian went round the wall, but he went the wrong way. <laughs> the end result still was a comfortable save for Steve Sutton. They flung most things at Derby, and maybe they're just waiting for a break. Sometimes when you watch a, 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 a free kick like that in that sort of position, you, some, you, you sort of get a feeling that there's no real intent there and it didn't look like it. But there's intent here now with Lee Clark away and he's pulled it right across the face of that goal. Another tremendous position for Lee Clark. Presented with the young player of the month for the North East before the game. And he'll be a bit disappointed there, Jack. Yes, this is typical Lee Clark country. In down behind, in behind the fullback, making runs like that. He gets on the end of his ball. I thought he just might have taken the chance and had a little go at the guy trying to cut him up there. It was a bad angle again to shoot from. And most of those balls, you would, you would want played across the face of the goals when you've got the goalkeeper at the near post. That's still a touch of an experience in his game, no, understandably. I, I think so. Peacock now working for Venison and Lee, and the triangles being worked there. The nudge by Kelly as that one came in, and another nudge back, I think. Hudson under pressure, and Kelly, well, he got the shot in quickly, didn't quite get the power he might have needed to beat Steve Sutton before he got down. But it was quick reactions there from David Kelly. When a player's put under pressure like this and David gets the ball here he had actually had time to turn around and take the ball but I was amazed at the defender running alongside David instead of just letting David go he was up, going to be yards upside this is where Derby are a bit vulnerable they're not the best markers and pickers up the readers of the game at the back Newcastle can get back in this game five minutes left in this first half to try and go in level they're under pressure here again, and Cernicek just beating Kitson to it. And another heart-stopping moment there, and again Cernicek comes out looking for a flag or a whistle, but there was nothing coming their way. But Cernicek covered well, and that stirred the crowd up yet again. Now Kelly, Kelly trying to get round short. Kelly still giving a hold of the ball, but short battling for all he's worth and Derby come away with it, and Patterson plays it forward, and a great cheer goes up as Paul Kitson on the far side, he's caught offside. That was a good move by David Kelly there, it just shows the laxities in his game though. David's a very light boy, and he's not the strongest lad at holding challenges off, and the boy just brushed him aside there. A little bit stronger than David would have, David would have got away with it, a much, a much, he would have got away with more there. Lee. Beresford. Peacock. Kelly trying to get there again. Craig Short was there. Another corner kick then. Equaliser now really would set up Newcastle for the second half. Again, Derby look as though they're going to get it away. Clark. Peacock scurrying away now. Russell is there. Clark just inside. He had to turn. Kelly! He's come so close. The equaliser proving elusive. Another great move, though. Same move, you see. They're not picking them up tight enough. Too much room for Peacock. David Kelly finding room in the midfield, and, and a great header from David. He deserved the goal for that one. 
Newcastle do deserve a goal. They don't be, deserve to be down in this game. Lovely turn. Lovely header. So David Kelly, on several occasions, has come close to getting a goal for Newcastle. Derby may feel they've sustained most things that Newcastle have managed to throw at them. They've got another 45 minutes of it to get through. So if they don't steal another one, certainly check. Attentive there. So really big up and under from Cernicek. Good defending. Pembridge. Also, I finally got it clear. It was a bit fortunate to break there, but... Well, that was a tight decision, and... Uh... That was a dreadful decision. There's no way Marco Gabardini was offside when that ball was played. You look at the line on this one when we get a playback, if we do. Marco was, all, was, was, was well onside at this, in this, this situation. Well, we're off and running with play again. We'll try and have a look at that one and keep a, a little uh, note of it. Uh, Jack in no doubt to the decision there, and in fact, while we were looking at that, Arthur Cox was off the bench and pulling his players away from the linesman. It's a case of Newcastle being caught square and a player running from midfield, and that's exactly what happened, and the ball was slid for Marco Gabardini, who was well on side, in my opinion. May be wrong, but I would doubt it. Inside now. Maybe that's one we'll have a look at during the half-time interval. But you can't take your eyes off the game for a moment in this. See what I mean? Newcastle still pressing and behind for the corner kick. It's just the one goal that separates these two teams. With Newcastle in the final minute of this first half, yet again pressing for an equaliser. Lee Clark still breaking for Newcastle. Didn't get any lift on that one. David Kelly comes off the six yard box and keeps the move going. He did well there. Lee Clark for Liam O'Brien. Robert Lee is out wide, but it's through the middle. Clark made a good run. And Pembridge, as busy as ever, gets a foot to it. And Kitson is away. And Tommy Johnson is absolutely streaking down the left. This is Johnson. It's Lee who's gone back with him, and Cernicek out. And Johnson made up miles of ground then. And ends up on the deck for his efforts. But it was Robert Lee who tracked back with him, and just as well. And now here come Newcastle again. Peacock looking to turn. Venison into stoppage time at the end of the first half. And what a first half we've had. Peacock. And Kelly again claiming... I thought he might claim he got a bit of a, a nudge then. It's been so congested in that penalty area. Into stoppage time. And uh, Tommy Johnson still injured down there. The hero of the half for Derby with that goal. After two minutes. a bit of trouble. It was one of those challenges that when he hit Sherbet, Servicek, his leg sort of stayed there and the rest of his body went over the top. And he, he actually went quite high and came down in a funny way. Let's hope he's OK. It looks like his ankle or his knee, I'm not sure. Let's have a look at that offside now while we've got the chance, or was it an offside, Jack? Yeah, well, you'll have a look at this. you have a look at this. Where is it? No, you no didn't, it's, it's, you can't tell it from that distance. They're just not quite wide enough to be not able to see from uh, from that angle, but uh, I can only repeat again, Jack's Marco, reaction was instant. Marco was running. He was actually running very, very quick. He covers the ground very fast. And he was running as the ball was played alongside him. Well done, Marco. Marco Gavinini sportingly kicking that ball back to give Newcastle possession. Fiercely competitive but there's been nothing too out of order so far in the game. And that's the end of the first half. Tommy Johnson can afford to smile as he walks off 
got a clattering at the end of the half, but he got that goal after two minutes. That's really upset the odds here at St James Park. It's been all Newcastle after that, constant pressure, but they've not been able to find an equaliser yet. There'll be plenty of thought and discussion in both dressing rooms as Kevin Keegan needs to motivate his team. Not that they've lacked motivation, but get the sense of direction to try to get them back on level terms. At half-time, though, it's Newcastle United nil, Derby County 1. We'll be back after the break with the views of David Mills. Don't go away. Welcome back to the Tyne Tees match. If you've just come in, the half-time score at St James's Park is Newcastle United nil, Derby County 1. I've got David Mills with me in the studio. What about that first half, David? I enjoyed it, Duncan. It was exciting. It was incessant Newcastle pressure. The only thing it lacked was a Newcastle goal, really. And uh, they'll be disappointed to be going in at half-time 1-0 down, but encouraged by the fact that they did create a lot of chances in that first half. They must have been shocked by that early goal. People really hadn't settled in their seat, had they? No, that's right. I mean, that would be very, very disappointing for Kevin, I'm sure, to lose it so early in the game. But that's what Marco Gabbiadini is good at. He does force the ball beyond players and attack the space, and he's a powerful, forceful player. And he kept going, didn't he? I mean, that was the real thing. How he lost a bit on him and he kept at him. That's right. He'd made his mind up early to go past the defender here, or to, certainly to try and knock the ball into the space. And what he did do was... Rather than try and get an extra stride in, which a lot of players would do, and try and cross the ball still on his feet, he actually realises that he's struggling, and to get to the ball first, he's got to lunge that extra yard and force it across the face of the goal. And it's a super ball, the keeper's got no chance, and good support there on that far post. They didn't create too many chances though in the first half, did they? No, Newcastle really just have to be careful that they don't... Um, get caught sloppy defensively. They look to break very, very quickly, Derby. They're getting a lot of players behind the ball, Derby, and defending in numbers, but they're not really well organised. As Jack says, they don't really take up good defensive positions, and if you look at one or two of the moves in the first half, Newcastle have got to be encouraged by the amount of times they played the ball into the Derby penalty area and did get attempts on goal. Now, this is probably the closest that Newcastle came. It's when David Kelly hit the post and Sheedy put it just wide. That's right. I mean, very, very unfortunate here. There's not a lot you can do. But there's three Derby defenders in and around the six-yard box there, and Kelly still manages to get a strike on goal. And unfortunately, it just falls for Sheedy on his wrong foot, and he just pulls it wide. But good build-up work again. That's right. A lot of space there for Robert Lee on that right-hand side. As I say, Derby defenders don't get anywhere near the ball. And, I mean, if that hits the target, it's a goal all the way. Thanks very much, David. Just to remind you, we're on the air until around 20 past five, and before then, we'll talk to David about the match he watched yesterday at Ellen Road. It was Middlesbrough at Leeds. We'll have all the key goals, of course, from yesterday's first division matches, and there are some belters amongst them. We'll also be rounding up the regional scene with the action from divisions two and three. And the second half of Newcastle against Derby County is live and exclusive from St James's Park. It's coming up after this break, so stay with us, please. Welcome back to the Tyne Tees match. We're just a couple of minutes away from the second half at St James's Park. The score, if you're just coming in, Newcastle United nil, Derby County 1. David, what do you think Kevin will have been telling the Newcastle team in the dressing room at half-time? I would think that he'll be saying just try and maintain in the second half what they did in the first without obviously conceding the goals, just to tighten up a little bit defensively and make sure that they don't concede a second goal because then they would have a mountain to climb. But they've got to try and maintain the tempo in the second half as they did in the first because it was incessant and they are creating chances and I can see them creating chances again in the second half and I'm sure that goals will come if they're persistent in the way they approach the game. Now, I imagine you may have been on the end of a tongue lashing from Arthur Cox in the dressing room at half-time before. What do you think he's been saying? Well, again, I think he'll be reasonably happy. He'll have been pleased that they've nicked such an early lead. I would think he'll, what he'll be saying is, well, defensively now, we've prevented Newcastle from scoring, we've lived dangerously, we've got to make sure that when we have bodies in defensive positions that we get closer to people, because if Newcastle, as I say, continue to create the chances in the second half as they did in the first, then I'm sure they'll punish Derby. 
Now, of course, really, how do you see the game going then? I still fancy Newcastle, as I say. If, if they can stop uh, Derby getting a second goal and, as I say, keep the game going with the same sort of flair and gusto like they did in the first half, then I think that they will create chances and I'm sure they won't continue missing them. How much of a blow would a defeat be? It would be disappointing. I don't think it would be a major blow. They have got the cushion of the number of points lead that they have, and every side at times throughout the season has a little bit of a hiccup. You know, you can't continually play to the standard that they have throughout a complete season. So I think that they'll do OK. Thanks, David. Well, we can now go back to St James's Park, where we believe we have Terry McDermott to speak to us. Terry, is it just a question of patience? Did you say that to the players? Yeah, I think that's what we've got to say, because we're, for 45 minutes, that's as well as we've played all season, I would think. Um, we're playing against a good team, um, and we've, we've really, for 45 minutes, we've hammered them, really. We've just got to be a little bit more patient. We've had our chances. We've got to start taking them now. Dangerous on the break, they are, though. Yeah, because of, because of the pace that they've got. They've got a lot of pace up front. We've got, we've got to watch that. But obviously, now, with, the, get, with them getting an early goal, We've got to chase it a little bit, but we've got to be also careful with the pace of the back. But having said that, the chances we created in the first half, we do that in the second half. I'm sure we can come up with something anyway. Go and watch the game. Thanks thank very you. Much. Thank you. The thoughts there from half time of Terry McDermott. You've missed nothing in the action. Newcastle straight away starting off on the attack as they did throughout the first half. Lee Clark looking to get an early dangerous ball in. Perhaps it'll be John Beresford or even Kevin Sheedy. And that one uh, dealt with and up for Gaviadini. What do you think would have been Kevin's half-time message to them, Jack? More or less what Terry said. It's uh, it's a case of not being very careful at the back that you're not going to get caught on the break. Don't push the game too hard. Just keep playing the way you are and, the and take the chances that you've made and, and they'll come if you keep playing the way you are. And... Uh, they just need a break because they get back in the game and then they'll go and own it. Maybe this but if they don't, they could get beat, what, one, two or three? If, if, if Derby were to score the next goal, it could be anything. Worked by Beresford then, back for Kevin Scott. Newcastle, of course, won 2 1 at Derby on the second Saturday of the season. It was a result that really set the whole North East jumping. And they're looking for another penalty appeal, but they didn't get it then. David Kelly once more down under pressure. David Allison absolutely adamant there. No, I don't think David was fouled here, actually. I think he tried to get a, a, an over-the-top volley. He, he, he leans back to try and get a shot in there. And he was starting to sell himself when the player hit him. He's off balance. I didn't think it was a penalty. But I, I wish he had given it. Unlucky, Jack. David Allison agreeing with your professional rather than personal interpretation there. Now he jumping to get that ball clear. Now there's a bit of a bad referee. He's given a foul against the boy for nudging David there. And David, it, it, was, it was hardly a nudge at all. Now, if he's going to give that there free kick, why didn't he give the penalty at the other end? Because he was nudged harder than that. I didn't think there was anything in either ball. It's like saying you cannot not, no longer have any physical contact in the game of football. There's been a reasonable amount of physical contact in this game so far. But two or three penalty appeals, most of them concerning David Kelly, have all been quite positively turned down by Mr Allison. He's one of our more experienced officials. forward there. So we check. A little bit tight. See what I mean. Derby coming forward again now. Kavanagh. This is Pembridge. He didn't waste any time getting his shot in Mark Pembridge. He's got 13 goals from midfield so far this season. There's another million and a quarter by this time from Luton. It was very quick getting the shot in here, Jack. Yeah, and, he, and he, he shook it well, actually. It just drifted away from the goals, but it's a good shot. Being launched forward by Steve Sutton then. Venison. And again, Lee Clark going on that familiar run. Martin Cool is the Derby player with him. Robert Lee. Yeah, that's 
a corner kick to Newcastle. You know, the Derby fans are complaining in the corner. Just can't please everyone, can you? Oh, can you? Quickly taken and back for Venison. Now Robert Lee with a little bit of room. Lee soon cut off though. Scott is up there. Now O'Brien and Kelly. And again he turned quickly and got his shot in. But he just doesn't seem to be able to get the ball wide enough of the keeper. Something well positioned. That is the secret of being a good goalkeeper. Picking up the right position. The ricochet here, up on his feet, picks up the right position. Look at him, three or four yards off his goal line. Difficult even for David to get past him right or left there in, in that situation. Kitson nearly getting away from the defence, but good cover again by Newcastle. Right free by Beresford. Kelly chasing and chasing, and Peacock too trying to get there. And the pattern of the first half quickly re-established. It's been absolutely non-stop throughout the game. Straight away, they're back into their stride at the top of the second half here. O'Brien, Forsyth, no problems there, and knocks it forward. Patterson, Gabbiadini. Gabbiadini in, turns Scott. Newcastle come away this time. Beresford. Run there from Kelly. He just coming out of hand there as he was robbed by Craig Short. Scott for O'Brien. O'Brien turning. Lee, Venison outside of him. Lee going through a crowd of players. Kelly trying to keep a 1 2 as an option. But there's that danger man, Tommy Johnson and Gabbiadini and Kitson, both in good positions. Johnson. And that was a, a wasted break, I would have thought, from Derby's point of view. Johnson getting away well, but he had Kitson and Gabbiadini up in good positions. He actually thought Kitson stopped there. Thought it would be the kick run, and he probably got on the end of that ball across the goal. Quickly taken for Sheedy, and Kelly, non-stop effort from David Kelly, and he's got away from Kavanagh. Charged down again. Now Sheedy picks it up. Into the middle there. But again, Darby get the ball clear and up to Kitson. Gabbiadini looking together well. The Darby front three when they're going to sniffle the ball. Pembridge breaking and Johnson again is out wide. This is dangerous from Darby. Pembridge is going through the middle. Great covering tackle, but still they've not got the danger clear. Now they have. Twice in as many minutes, though. Darby breaking with such danger. But now it's Newcastle's turn and Kelly... Kelly chasing for all he is worth, and Steve Sutton plays that one. He's run a marathon already, David Kelly. Sometimes you think David does too much for me. But if you run all the time, when it comes to a position when you need to really have that little bit extra burst of speed like he had to produce there, he hasn't got it because he spends too much energy running all over the place. But you can't have it both ways. You like David to chase, you can't be there to put the little bit extra, extra work in at the end of it. He's, he's done well today. He's done well today. Been unlucky with his shooting. The number of shots Newcastle have actually got in, you really do feel that an equaliser is always on the cards. He failed to score four times in 26 league games, Newcastle. Unfortunately, two of those were on our live games against Barnsley and Swindon. They're pressing for a goal now for all they are worth. at first, quite and cool on that occasion, and headed clear by Patterson, hooked in by Beresford, with a shove there from Kavanagh, O'Brien, every ball fought for, Pembridge, didn't quite fall for Johnson that time. Defeat in the last ten League and Cup games, Newcastle. And we've got about 35, 36 minutes to spoil that good record. 
Ogron. Good sweeping pass out to Beresford. As Newcastle attack on this left-hand touchline, just knocked in there dangerously. And Sheedy just couldn't reach him, sat and waiting for the ball to come on then. And David Kelly, as ever, was chasing every cause. Got away with it though, Steve Sutton. Lee Clark. Lee Clark from a deep position. Looks like Newcastle are going to make a substitution here. Who would you bet? I think uh, it was that selection decision before the start of the game that Jack had a question mark, honest, before the game even kicked off. Paul Bracewell warming up on the touchline. There's a ball boy there, just going through his limbering up. You can see the bottom of the picture there. Meanwhile, Beresford winds up for the throw. Gaviadini bringing that one down well, but Harry. Equally impressively, got a foot in. Got a few options in permutations, Newcastle, as opposed to just personnel changes. And I think if Basewell came on, you might look to some changes with Robert Lee's role, perhaps, who's been very successful as a, a front runner alongside Kelly. And this is Peacock, who's beavering away as ever, and now it's Robert Lee, and now Lee Clark. Looking for Sheedy out wide. Sheedy for the Lee Clark. He's now on this side, he just lost his balance. What a shame. Such a good run. Crunching stuff there from Kevin Scott. Pembridge now for Derby. And Johnson just about put the ball to Forsyth. And another crunching challenge. Well, I don't think any manager's going to fault either side for effort in this one, Jack. No Bustins have really put themselves about today. Derby in their way, defending, waiting to play in the break, getting back people back in numbers. Newcastle playing nice one-touch football, building up, making some good positions, but not having any th real threat at the end of it. They really d could do with somebody maybe a little bit stronger up front. It seems to be where they've lacked it today. David's played well and run well and done all he's expected of, but he's a bit light. Unlike Gavidini, who bashed the door down early on to create the opening for Johnson. Exactly, maybe the other way around, you might have seen a different thing in this game. O'Brien, robbed there by Patterson, now it's Kitson. Looking from a deeper position, and Pembridge looking to find Johnson, and very nearly did as well. Johnson and Lee there. On collision course, got an elbow or something in the, in the mouth. Robert Lee doesn't look desperately concerned about it. No, Robert Lee fought hard to get away from the player there and got away from him and uh, was held a little bit. I didn't think there was anything great in it. Johnson's getting a booking, possibly for one comment too many. To see what happened there, Jack, there wasn't anything too serious, was it? I don't think anything very serious at all. It was just a little bit of a... A little bit of cut. He kicked him on the back of the leg, actually. We missed that bit. Well, he's got a bloody nose for his uh, efforts and a yellow card. And here comes Lee Clark through the middle. It's a tremendous tackle, I would have thought, by Mark Pembridge, although the appeals are up again. If, in fact, it was a tackle, it'll be a very difficult one to see this when you look on the show again on the playback. Lee Clark was through when the boy made a challenge. Whether he knocked Lee Clark's legs off the ball or knocked the ball off Lee Clark's legs is something to be interesting to see here. And left it too late again. Who's that at least for him? This is live, I'm afraid. The game going so quickly, there's hardly a time to get a replay in. Let's see if we can have another look at that one in a minute. Another injury down, another collision. It's Lee Clark. Well out. Harry Venison grabbing him. And this time it's Craig Shorter goes into the book. Mr. Allison not liking that challenge. I'm afraid I missed that one, I didn't see it. I was looking at something else on the field at the time. It ended up with Lee Clark on the deck. I just happened to glance back as I heard the roar from the crowd. We'll see it maybe in a little bit. Let's just have a look at Lee Clark going through that minute or two ago. We've got a different angle on that one. Yes, this one. 
Oh, he got a kick across him, I think. I don't think he played the ball as much as he uh, he, he got the player first and then he got the ball. Yeah. I would have thought if the referee had been in a better position, he made the given that. Perhaps up behind our cameraman behind the goal would have been. It's a dangerous cross. Clark couldn't reach it against the upright. Oh, how close can you get? It's a tremendous ball through the middle for Gabbiadini. Cernicek, he hasn't done enough. Over the top, what a waste. Now, Robert Lee well into stoppage time now. And O'Brien's in the middle, and O'Brien, the equaliser. 1-1, Liam O'Brien.